Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about uh, some of the concepts in the lubrications that is uh, uh, the heat generated concept, heat dissipation concept, uh, bearing modulus, quotient of friction. So all those things we will be discussing in this video. So already uh, in the previous video, we have discussed uh, some of the concept of the heat dissipated. Uh, just for the continuation purpose, I will just repeat the same thing. So, uh, we know like the heat dissipated uh, based on the projected area of the bearing in the previous example what we discussed. So, the formula can be written as HD is equal to CA into TB minus TA where C is the thing but heat dissipation quotient and which can be taken from the data handbook. And uh, we have another formula to determine the heat dissipated from the bearing that is HD is equal to I into D into T plus 18 square by K3. So, K3 value we can take it for two conditions that is for the well ventilated and for the uh, air condition. So, for the well ventilated and the heavy construction it is 0.2674 and 10 power 6 for the bearings for heavy construction well ventilated and for uh, uh, for point uh, K3 is equal to 0.4347 and 10 power 6 for the bearings of the light constructions in the uh, normal year. So, where capital T is nothing but Tp minus Ta, where we know that Tb is nothing but bearing surface temperature and T is the ambient temperature. And the explanation of this graph was already explained in the previous video. And even these conditions also we need to follow that for good performances, the important factor should be considered as a surface finish of the shaft and here we will be calling this a journal. So, there should be fine ground finish and preferably lapped and the surface hardness of the shaft means it is recommended that the shaft be made of steel containing at least 0.35 to 0.45 percent of the carbon and for heavy duty applications the shaft should be hardened. And moving to the grade of the lubricant in general, uh, higher the viscosity of the lubricant, uh, so longer the life. So, however, the higher the viscosity, the greater the friction. So, high viscosity lubricant should only be used with the high loads. So, in high load applications, bearing life may be extended by cutting a grease groove into the bearing. So, grease can be uh, pumped into the groove. So, here moving to the next one, uh, heat dissipation where uh, the friction generates heat and cause rise in the temperature of the bearing and the lubricant. So, in turn, this causes a reduction in the viscosity of the lubricating oil and could result in a higher wear. So, therefore, the housing should be designed with heat dissipation in mind. For example, a bearing mounted in a bakelite housing will not dissipate heat as readily as one mounted in an aluminium housing. And moving to the next one, shock loads and uh, uh, clearance. Where shock loads nothing but because of their oil cushioned operation, sliding bearings are capable of operating uh, successfully under conditions of uh, moderate radial shock loads. So, however, excessive uh, prolonged radial shock loads are likely to increase metal to metal contact and reduce the bearing life. So, large out of balance forces in rotating members will also reduce bearing life. So, the clearances, the bearings are usually uh, a light press fit in the housing and a shoulder tool is usually used in uh, armor press. So, there should be a running clearance between the journal and the bush and a general rule of thumb is to use a clearance of 1 by 1000 of the diameter of the journal. And moving to the length to diameter ratio that is I by D ratio. So, a good rule, a good rule of thumb is that the ratio should lie in the range of 0.5 to 1.5 and if the ratio is too small, uh, the bearing pressure will be too high and it will be difficult to retain lubricant and to prevent side leakage. So, if the ratio is too high, the friction will be high and the assembly misalignment could also cause metal to metal contact. And two more important concepts that is the bearing modulus and quotient of friction. Anyway, like indirectly we have discussed uh, in the previous videos, like uh, now we will discuss the actual definition and the formulas. So, bearing modulus is a modulus uh, which is used in the journal bearing design and basically it is a dimensionless number. And the bearing modulus is denoted with C and the formula is Z into N divided by P. Where Z is nothing but oil viscosity and small is nothing but speed of the rotation in revolutions per minute. And P is nothing but bearing pressure in uh, unit is Newton per mm square. So, for any given bearing, so there is a value for indicated uh, by C. So, for which the quotient of friction is at the minimum. And the bearing should not be operated at this value of bearing modulus since a slight decrease in speed or a slight increase in pressure will make the part of the shaft or axle that rests on the bearing operate in a partial lubrication state resulting in high friction, heating and wear. So, to prevent this, the average value of bearing modulus should be Z1 by P it should be greater than or equal to 3C or for large fluctuation and heavy impact loads Zn by P which is equal to 15C approximately. And moving to the next one, quotient of friction. Uh, quotient of friction often symbolized by the Greek letter mu and it is again a dimensionless uh, scalar value. So, which describes the ratio of 
force of friction between the two bodies and the force pressing them together. So it's very interesting and the values can be easily taken from any conditions and for any applications. So the quotient of friction depends on the materials used. For example, ice on steel has a low quotient of friction while rubber on pavement has a high quotient of friction. And the quotient of friction range from uh, near 0 to greater than 1 and it is an axiom of nature of friction between metal surfaces and that is greater uh, between two surfaces of similar metals uh, than between two surfaces of different metals. So hence brass will have a higher quotient of friction when moved against brass but less if move again uh, steel or aluminium. So only, we have many examples like in this video a small example I want to discuss and the remaining example we shall uh, continue in the next video. So uh, the following data are given for a 360 degree hydrodynamic, uh, hydrodynamic journal where radial load is 3.2 kilo Newton, journal speed uh, 1490 revolutions per minute and journal diameter 50 mm and bearing length 50 mm, radial clearance 0.05 mm and viscosity of the lubricant is 25 centipoise. So assuming that the total heat generated in the bearing is carried by the total oil flow in the bearing, so we need to calculate uh, power loss in friction the quotient of friction, minimum oil film thickness, uh, flow requirement uh, in uh, 1 per min minute and the temperature rise. So uh, we will go with the formula that is P is equal to W by LD where we know W value, L value and D value. So that is 3.2 into 1000 uh, because the 1000 is for the unit conversion and L and D values 50 and 50. So after simplification I am getting the values 1.28 mega Pascal converting Pascal into Newton per mm square it is 1.28 into 10 power 6. So our PA is Sommer field number which is S is equal to is Z n dash by now is that n dash by p into r by c square where r by c is nothing but 25 by 0 0.005 which is equal to 500 and z is equal to 25 centipoise so 25 into 10 power minus 3 pascal second so uh, substituting this so 1490 by 60 we will be getting a 24.833 uh, r by r per second we will be getting so substituting the above values we get s value somer field number s value 0 0.121 and for s is equal to 0 0.121 and l by d equal to 1 which is given in the question i will be going with the graph that is a frictional variable from the graph r by c into f is 3.22 and a minimum uh, film thickness variable is uh, h naught by c that is 0.4 flow and flow variable is q is equal to uh, q by rc in n dash l so that is uh, 4.33 after substitution so finally i am getting f is equal to 3.22 into 0 0.05 by 25 so that is 0 0.0064 and frictional torque t is equal to fwr that is uh, 0 0.0064 into 3200 into 0 0.025 so finally frictional torque is 0 0.51 to newton meter in terms of mm means 0 0.512 into 10 to the power of 3 newton mm and power loss in the bearing the formula is 2 into u into n dash into t by 1000 kilowatts the after substituting all the values the power loss in the bearing is 0 0.080 kilowatts so finally uh, ho is equal to 0 0.4 into 0 0.05 that is 0 0.02 mm so q by rc n dash l is equal to 4.33 from which we get q is equal to 6720.5 mm q per second so that is nothing but the temperature rise so we shall continue the remaining problems in the next video. Thank you.